Good afternoon, everybody. It's Mike, the Bowtie Rider. Happy Tuesday. Welcome to the second Nuts and Bolts video. Last time, we spent some time discussing the fundamental axiom of pre-writing. This time, I want to shift gears a little bit and start talking about some elements of story structure. Now, story structure is incredibly important. It's really fundamental. If you've ever read a story that just builds and builds and builds and it all comes together at the end of this massive, massive, awesome bis, the reason that that tends to work is usually because the author had a very good understanding of the elements of structure and they were able to set it up. Now, I'm not talking about formulas or recipes, something mindless that you just sort of turn the wheels and out comes a story. I'm instead talking about tools, what they are, and how to use them to build a solid structure. When it comes to story structure, there are some very big tools out there. Things like the three-act structure, the hero's journey, these very macroscopic scale story structure ideas. And those are useful tools. But today, I actually want to focus on something much smaller. I want to focus on a precise, small tool that is integral to every novel out there. And that tool is called a scene. I want to dive in and unpack just what exactly scenes are and how you use them. So let's get to it. So scenes are these fundamental building blocks of structure. You can think of them almost like narrative Legos that you just stack one on top of the other. And when you have a good foundation for each one of those Legos, you can build a structure as big and as complicated as you want. If you want to build an elaborate 10 book epic fantasy series, you can do that if you have a solid understanding of what scenes are and how they work. So what is a scene? For me, a scene has three components, and these components come in the following order. First, you have a clear statement of a goal. Second, you have some conflict introduced. Third, you have a resolution. Let's go over each one of these elements individually. Your scenes should open with a clear statement of the goal. Now, the goal is just something that the protagonist of the scene is trying to achieve. It could be very, very big, like trying to save the world. It could be something very, very small, like trying to just unlock a door. The reason that this is important is because it gives your readers context for what's going on. Conversely, if you've ever read a scene that doesn't have a clearly defined goal, that scene can usually fall a little bit flat. When the readers don't understand what the protagonist is trying to accomplish, no matter how elaborate your prose, it fundamentally turns reading into a passive process, and passive readers are more likely to get bored and put your book down. Clearly stating a goal is good, but if all we had was a simple, clearly defined goal, I want to have the greatest hat in town. And done. And it's immediately attained? Well, that's really boring. To make things more interesting, to provide some active opposition for the characters, we need to introduce conflict. I want to have the finest hat in town. Now where the hell did my hat go? Conflict is fundamental. And just because I'm talking about conflict doesn't mean that I'm talking about people bursting in the door with guns or some huge explosion. <laughs> Conflict can be as simple as a locked door, or a car that won't start. And in fact, one of the signs of a really established author is that they come up with really creative ways to provide obstacles for their characters in the scene that are really interesting and unique ways to provide conflict. The other reason that conflict is important is that it creates tension, and that tension is what helps pull the readers through your story. If you're ever seeing a scene that feels really kind of laggy, or there doesn't seem like there's a lot going on, you can probably check to see, do you actually have enough sources of conflict? So, we have our clear goal. We have our characters trying to achieve it, and we have some conflict. Now, we need to go to the final part of a scene, and that is the resolution. You see, your readers are actually getting an implicit question inside their heads when they're reading a scene with a clearly stated goal and some interesting conflict in it. The reader is going to wonder, will this character achieve the goal? The whole purpose of the resolution of a scene is to definitively answer that question. And there are actually two main ways that you can effectively answer that question. The first way to effectively answer that question is by saying, yes, but. Does your character achieve the goal? Yes, but this new problem cropped up because of it. 
I want to find my hat to have the best hat around in town. Ah, yes, I found my hat. But who that over there? They have an even better one. Hey, look, arrival. The second effective way to answer it is no and. Does your character achieve their goal? No. And things got even worse. I want to find my hat to have the best hat in town. No, I haven't found my hat. And I'm hearing that now all the other hats in town are missing. The resolution, as you might have noticed, is a spot where things don't actually go pretty smoothly for your character. In fact, some craft books don't actually call this a resolution, they actually call it the disaster. The whole point is that things need to change for your characters, and things need to get worse. Even if they achieve some short-term goal, the yes, but answer should show that there should be some other setback, some other twist that comes up because of it. And these complications and switchbacks are what let you, the author, control the tension and slowly raise the stakes throughout the story. Because you fundamentally want the characters to be trying to achieve these goals, but always making the journey to that success interesting and unique. To illustrate the importance of this, if you've ever read a book that feels really episodic, where this problem came up and we fixed it, this problem came up and we fixed it, this problem came up and we fixed it, you might have lots of conflict in each one of those individual scenes, but your resolutions in those cases tend to be too pat. You're trying to do, and then something else happened. They're solving the problems, and those solutions aren't making their life more interesting. And no matter how unique your conflict is, if it's not having lasting consequences throughout these particular scenes, it's not going to be interesting. It's going to feel flat and episodic, and you're just going to lose readers. So that's all I wanted to go over this week. I wanted to give you the definition of what a scene is and go over those three components of the scene because they're really important. So if you want to read more about scenes, I'm going to include some references down below in the comments. Number one is a craft book that is hands down my favorite craft book. It's called Scene and Structure by Jack Bickham. The second thing comes to the idea of articulating the resolution as an answer to the question and the answer being either yes but or no and. I first heard this articulated by Mary Robin at Kowal on writing excuses. As always, please feel free to like, share, or subscribe. That really does help me out. It helps my videos get in front of new people. If you have any kinds of questions or something isn't quite clear, please feel free to ask away in the comments and I'll try to clarify because I want these videos to be a useful resource. And if you have that question, someone else probably does too. That's it. That's all I have for this week. Thank you for joining me for this Nuts and Bolts episode. I'm Mike, the Bowtie Writer. I will see you all next time.